so today we have something different. Um, I've been looking about for, you know, as I'm playing Kings of War, learning how to play the game. Um, it's, uh, as I say, easy to learn, difficult to master. Some things um, are hard to put in context without some gaming experience, and, and that can be um, how to make the most of the brain that's on the table in your game of Kings of War. Now, um, I've asked uh, some of the community, um, the Fanatics group, I got one, I got a response there, and uh, my gaming friends, um, and uh, we've put down a list of things that uh, you can do. Um, we don't know if there's other things that can be done. If you, if you solve something, uh, you can put it in. Um, and you know, maybe sometime down the road, I'll do a version two of this video. Um, now we're in the middle of the COVID crisis. Um, I've been painting miniatures, uh, so is pretty much everyone else, or playing Universal Battle. Um, that's the, the initial learning curve is a bit steep. Doing it by yourself is a problem, um, in, as in the how steep it is. But if you can start playing with a friend who's already played it before, um, because the main thing is you really want to set up a play space in the in Universal Battle that contains all the things that you need for Kings of War, so all the counters and stuff like that, and you know, terrain pieces and the rest. Um, once you've got all that, uh, you can just join with the army that you've built, um, or you can just select one from the list. Um, that's a little, it's not as intuitive as it should be, um, but you know, it's not too difficult. Someone can talk you through it. Um, okay, so um, what I've done here is I've brought a, a selection of units from uh, my Empire of Dust and my Kingdoms of Men uh, armies, and um, I am going to go through the different terrain types and basically describe um, how best to use them. I've taken a selection of units uh, from my Empire of Dust and uh, Kingdoms of Men um, League of Broadia army, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it through uh, the various um, terrain types and just a couple of the, the basics uh, when it comes to positioning and how you can use the terrain uh, to your advantage. The first piece of terrain we're going to talk about oh, is going to be blocking terrain uh, from the rulebook. Blocking terrain is any solid piece of terrain such as high walls, buildings or large rock formations. The edge of the table is also treated as blocking terrain. Um, units cannot move across blocking terrain and must go around it. Units can pivot through blocking terrain. Blocking terrain impacts line of sight. Okay, so uh, right here we have uh, you know some rock pile, whatever um, that is uh, blocking terrain, and we have uh, two League of Rorty units in the front. We have uh, the knights and the foot guard. Um, under normal situation, this looks really bad for the um, uh, for the mummies. Um, what we have is we have two units that are in the front arc. Or, uh, their leader points are in the front arc, so they can uh, combi charge multiple units into the front arc. There is enough room for both units to be placed. Okay, so there's only a, a small section, but that's enough. So that unit would be hit there. So there's two ways to uh, to overcome um, this situation that you've got there. Okay, the first thing is, okay, let's put that there. Let's put this, uh, these guys here again. Same spacing as before. We'll just you know pretend. Okay, so um, if your unit had been close to the side, you would have to choose which unit because there's not enough space. He comes in here. This unit here blocks off all the front facing, enemy can't charge the foot guard in as well. So he's either gonna be stuck with doing one or the other. So you could potentially bottle up a unit um, by being closer. Um, the disadvantage of that is if you are too close, you're not going to get to use a pivot to do a really dirty trick. So what you've got is you've got your unit here. Um, uh, well, oh, might as well do it from here. Uh, if you try to turn, Pivot, can't pivot far enough. Leader point is still in the front arc of the unit. Okay, so that's the reason why you wouldn't want to go there. But if you're a little bit further, you can pivot just enough so that put the unit's leader point in your flank. Because his uh, leader point is in the side arc of your unit and he cannot physically fit there, he cannot charge that unit. Uh, one extra note for um, blocking terrain is you may not place an objective within three inches of it. So it has to be at least three inches away. Uh, 
Okay, so the next type of terrain is uh, difficult terrain. Uh, difficult terrain from the rule book. Uh, this type of terrain consists of things like woods, crop fields, areas of rocky terrain, or scree and ponds. Okay, while moving at the double, units treat difficult terrain as blocking terrain instead. If a unit's leader point is in a piece of difficult terrain, then that unit ignores that piece of difficult terrain when checking line of sight. Otherwise, difficult terrain uh, impacts line of sight. If a charging unit's move has gone through or ended over any portion of difficult terrain, then it is hindered. And a shooting unit moving into, into difficult terrain gives cover to the unit it is shooting at. Okay, so what we have here is uh, we have an area of difficult terrain. Um, difficult terrain is one of those things that is very, very handy when it comes to objective placement. Um, if you are placing an objective, uh, what you can do is, um, and hoping that you get the side of the table that you want, because uh, unless you've got units of your own to counter, um, this could be a problem for you. So what you've got here is you've got a, a piece of terrain, uh, area terrain. So you want to move it back? Yeah, three and a half. That, that, that's all you need to go. Okay. You have a si last turn of the game. Foot guard is coming for this objective right now. Um, it's nine inch. It's just, you know, it's under nine inches. They could have the double to get there, except it's blocking terrain. The closest they can get is five inches. Or if they have the double, really, they can go up to the edge. Um, they are still out of range. Whoops. Okay, so. Uh, if you place it too far forward, they can get to the edge and still get it. Now, when it comes to defending that objective. Last turn of the game. You've been sitting up here. Whatever. Uh, or you know, let's say well, you've been sitting on the on the objective. Um, the enemy is within charge distance of you. The uh, the ten inches they would make it. Not a good place for you to be. Uh, they could charge you, take the objective if they take you out. Instead, you back up. Okay, you are now out of charge range. They cannot get to the objective. In this situation, we have a unit of handgunners that need to move up to grab an objective um, near the end of the game, um, maybe the last turn. Uh, so they have to move up to get within three. Okay, so normally when you move, you get a minus one to hit. Um, however, if you move into terrain, you get another minus one to hit um, anything you're shooting at. Um, so if you have a you know, a ranged value of five, um, instead of just hitting on sixes, it'll be half on sixes, which is the same as pot shot for the handgunners. In this situation, we have a forest. Um, it, the objective is within three inches of the back. This unit here uh, is not doing any shooting, but at the same time, it cannot be seen. Um, so nobody's gonna be shooting at it. And um, if necessary to, uh, to shoot, if you really need to shoot, uh, you can move yourself just a little bit in. And once you're in, you can be seen to be shot at. You, see you, get, uh, you get cover still from anybody that's going to be in your front arc. If they're on your side arcs, probably not. Um, and you can shoot the unit. Uh, the downside is they can also charge you. Uh, through positioning, you can give yourself um, a little bit of uh, extra survivability if you're going to be taking a charge. Um, you know, normally with handgunners, you might want to shoot, but say uh, if it was something else, um, swordsman, whatever, uh, you'd want to move them. So um, while you're clear of terrain here, you got enough plenty of space to pivot, etc. Uh, but if um, you're, you know, if you move in, enemy that's charging you, because they have to square up, so your unit size equal or bigger is going to go into the um, the hindering terrain. They're going to get a minus one to hit, unless they have Pathfinder, um, which affects difficult terrain, or Strider, which uh, assists charging. Okay, so I'm going to put these guys back here. Um, and uh, what I'm going to show is, instead of that unit, we're going to switch it out for a unit of CAV. Unit of CAV, you can keep your own uh, ability to pivot, say you were the mummies. Um, so you've got, you know, you've got room to pivot. Okay. Um, but at the same time, you force the opponent, uh, opponent's unit just to hit the, uh, the difficult terrain there. Um, and then they will be uh, hindered on the charge. So as a counter, 
uh, to that tactic, um, what you can do is um, you can combi charge with somebody even if they have no chance of hitting, um, say a wizard, and uh, you charge him in. You have to share the frontage. He nudges them over. They will not be in the difficult terrain. They will not be hindered. So you get to fight at full efficiency with uh, the guys that you're originally going to charge with. Here we have an obstacle. Uh, as from the rules, obstacles are long and narrow pieces of terrain, like a low wall, a fence, a hedge, etc. Something that uh, a roughly man-sized creature could see over and clamber across easily. Obstacles should be no more than one inch high, any high, and they will be blocking terrain instead. Units can move over obstacles normally, uh, but they cannot cross them while moving at the double. Okay, so here we have a situation where we have an objective marker. It is placed just over three inches away. For defending, um, you can do the same thing as you do with the, uh, the, the, the difficult terrain. Um, is uh, you can force a, a unit that's charging you to, uh, to be settled into the, uh, the obstacle, uh, giving you that minus one to hit. A unit up against the fence, um, you are going to get cover because uh, it doesn't block line of sight, but it does provide cover um, to height two. And uh, I guess if there's height one, some height one stuff as well. Okay, so um, also another thing is you have a shooting unit and a target unit. This unit shooting here to them would provide them cover. If they were up against here, then they have no cover. So just like um, uh, with uh, difficult terrain, uh, if you can put a defensive unit um, behind it, you can take the charge and uh, they will be hindered, but uh, your attacks back, being a counter charge, will not be hindered. The last terrain type are hills. From the rulebook, hills are elevated terrain pieces on which units can stand. In order to be on a hill for game purposes, a unit have to have at least half of its unit base on it. So this would not be on the hill. Uh, this would be on the hill, at least half the base. And as usual, you, know, you need to balance and dice. Hills have no impact on movement. So you can move at, uh, at the double, um, charge, whatever, no problem at all. Okay, so uh, in this situation here, um, you know, we have a, a height uh, three hill um, blocking the view to the, uh, the guys. Um, if this unit had moved up to here, leader point on the hill, that means that they have line of sight, so they're not penalized for seeing, so next turn they could charge. Um, uh, but also if someone shoots at them, they have cover. So um, hills also help with one aspect of the game, and that is line of sight. Uh, what we have here is a unit of um, hand gunners um, shooting at or wanting to kill a pesky wizard who's healing this unit of uh, foot guard. Uh, in this situation, you can't see. However, if they had been on a hill, they had the hill's height to their own. Uh, let's say the hill is height three, and they're five, so plus two, so five. Being five, uh, that is height two, there is a three or greater difference between heights, you're shooting at him without any cover. If it was a height two hill, instead of a height three hill, it would still be uh, providing cover, but you can shoot at him. So uh, hills are very handy uh, for shooting things from. So if you're a melee unit on top of a hill and you're going to charge, um, if you are unhindered, um, you get a thunderous charge plus one. Now, keep in mind that, um, say you were here and you take the charge, you know, whatever, say you're up here, you take the charge um, you, and you've taken some damage. When you charge down the hill, you're not gonna get it because you don't get thunderous charge if you're disordered. Okay, so um, units that don't benefit from this, uh, if they have the fly special rule, even if you've lost it due to being disordered, do not gain that bonus. If you want to uh, guarantee yourself uh, the first charge uh, where there's a hill involved, um, what you want to do is you want to put yourself at a position where the uh, leader point of the hill 
is, uh, sorry, uh, the beginning of the hill where a leader point would be if the enemy moves up so they can charge is within your charge range. At this stage, um, the unit cannot charge over um, and uh, usually it also blocks cavalry. So the cavalry, even though they've got superior movement, cannot charge over that hill because they cannot see you.